All right, in this video, I want to talk about the reproductive system and specifically fo uh, follicle formation. Now, the primary role for the reproductive system, whether it's the male or female reproductive system, is to make a baby. Uh, for the male, you know, it's, it's to make sperm, get that sperm inside a woman, uh, have the sperm fertilize an egg, and so on and so forth, make a baby. Well, <clears throat> when you talk about the egg, uh, follicle formation is basically kind of the steps or the the different um, modes of making the egg so that the the egg can in turn receive a sperm, be fertilized, and then undergo the steps of meiosis to eventually make a baby. Um, the egg uh, you can think of as the female oocyte. Oocyte, let me write that. Now, an oocyte is just a sex cell. It's the female sex cell specifically. But the general term for sex cells is going to be gametes. And that can be either male or female. It really doesn't matter. The male sex cell is obviously the sperm. And the females is the egg. Um, in this case, it's going to be the oocyte. We're going to kind of talk a little bit uh, on how the follicle and the oocyte are kind of formed a little bit. It'll be kind of a brief introduction on that. Uh, and, and then how to tell the difference between a primary follicle and a secondary follicle in a primary oocyte and a secondary oocyte. So what the heck is a follicle? Well, you can think of a follicle uh, as a container, right? It's the container that's going to hold the oocyte inside it. You can maybe kind of relate that to, you know, if you have a hair follicle, the hair follicle in your head, uh, holds the root of the hair which keeps it attached to your scalp. You can kind of think of it in, in that sense. In this this area uh, the follicle is like a container. So let's let's kind of talk a little bit of background about where the primary follicle, which is what we're going to talk about first, primary follicle comes from. And some of you may, you know, ladies you may have heard this in other classes before maybe from your mom, but all of your eggs you know what what you uh, drop during your menstrual cycle and if you want to get pregnant hopefully get fertilized <clears throat> all of those are developed while you're actually in uh, the womb so you know let's say we've got Sally here right right there whenever Sally's mom is pregnant with her uh, at around five or the fifth or sixth month or so um, she actually develops between six and seven million of what they're called at that point primordial oocytes later on in the pregnancy when they start to get ready for meiosis or mitosis um, they're called primary oocytes um, and then eventually primary follicles but she actually develops those and all you ladies in the room actually develop all of these uh, these sex cells while you're in the womb um, whenever you're you hit puberty you really only have about three four maybe five hundred thousand uh, left at that point Basically, you're supposed to drop one a month whenever uh, you have your period or your menstrual cycle. And that's kind of how that's supposed to work. All right, so how do they eventually become the egg to get ready to receive the sperm? Well, when you start talking about that, you start talking about follicle formation. It starts off at this oocyte, right? Well, the oocyte needs a container so that it can eventually uh, become an egg. So the oocyte, and let's just draw one here. Got a primary oocyte right here. That's the nucleus of the oocyte right inside there. Uh, the primary oocyte is going to have a container called a follicle. And let me change colors for this. The container around the oocyte is going to be follicular epithelium or epithelial tissue. It can also be called granulosa cells, just like this. You'll find that generally in anatomy, at least at this level, epithelial tissue and, and also in nursing really epithelial tissue is on just about everything that's a tube or inside something so like your your trachea your esophagus your bronchioles and your lungs things like that uh, it's generally lined with epithelial tissue any any tube almost uh, you can think of it that way so this is going to be epith uh, follicular epithelial tissue or granulosa cells uh, right here I'm just going to abbreviate that cells or granulosa. You should never take any of my spelling at face value. I'm the world's worst speller. Anyway, so this is uh, when it's inside, when the primary oocyte right here, 
primary. Oocyte is inside this container of epithelial tissue. It's called a primary follicle. So this whole thing is called a primary follicle. And that's what it looks like. Right? This is a picture of what it would look like underneath the microscope, that right there. Uh, whenever it has these cells around it, you can see, you know, kind of the cell wall and then this encasing that it's in of epithelial tissue right there. I need you need to be able to recognize this. If I show you this picture again without it labeled, you need to realize that this stuff right here, let me change colors, that's kind of bad. There, that'll show up a little bit better. That this stuff right here, you know these things right here, that this is the follicular epithelium and that this whole thing here is a primary ovarian follicle. You need to know that. So this is what it looks like. So what's the difference between a primary follicle or a secondary follicle, right? Don't let the name fool you. Just because it says primary follicle doesn't mean, you know, that it's the bee's knees, it's the end-all be-all. That's not always the case in anatomy. What it's eventually trying to get to so that it can be an egg, uh, be used in the menstrual cycle, receive a sperm, and eventually make a baby, it's trying to get to a state called the secondary follicle. And when it's the secondary follicle, there's a few key differences and a few, thing, few key things we're going to uh, point out also on the secondary follicle. But you're going to have a secondary oocyte, and it's just called secondary because of the secondary follicle uh, state, or at least that's all you need to know. Anyways, let me change colors here. Um, actually, let me use the same color for the oocyte as I did before. Just keep it simple. And then you're going to have uh, something on the outside here that I'm going to point out on the secondary follicle. Um, and it's going to be the zona pellucida. And it almost looks kind of like, or I think of it as a rubber band around the oocyte right here, the oocyte being the yellow deal. Uh, and it's, you know, all solid color. And I kind of think of it just as like a rubber band, uh, just because it kind of looks like a rubber band to me that someone stuck around, you know, the cell, the oocyte. That's going to be the zona uh, palooka. And then there's going to be these round little balls, and they're, they're little cells around that. And that's going to be the corona radiata what those two things are called. I'm just going to... And, you know, the primary oocyte develops into the secondary oocyte with gonadotropic hormones, which you'll learn more about whenever you get into philosophy, or, uh, physiology, not philosophy. <clears throat> I even have a video um, that maybe I'll post up if you want to on the tropic hormones of the pituitary, the anterior pituitary. But that's how this kind of uh, changes into that if you were wondering. The biggest key thing to notice on the secondary oocyte uh, or secondary follicle versus the uh, primary is going to be the antrum which I'm getting ready to draw right now. It's almost kind of like this half moon uh, looking thing and it's pretty ominous so it's kind of hard to miss. It'll look maybe something like that and it'll almost look like somebody just took and put in all these dots like this all around it. It's not like a real solid color when you're looking at it under a microscope. So it'll have kind of these dots in there like that. And then on the outside of that is going to be this follicular epithelial tissue. See I did that in orange. Let me do it in orange also just so I remain consistent. Is this follicular epithelial tissue or the granulosa tissue or cells, granulosa cells. But as soon as you see the antrum, and that's, I'll spell that for you. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Antrum, antrum, tomato, tomato. <clears throat> as soon as you see that, you know that you're dealing with a secondary follicle. This is the antrum. This is the zona radiata. <clears throat> this is the this is the pellucida, the zona pellucida. Ooh, 
Pellucida. I think that's right. That's the zone of Pellucida. This is the secondary oocyte uh, inside there. And uh, really, I shouldn't have included, I shouldn't have made so much space around that there. Uh, like it. There's, let me, let me just correct that right now. This black space right here, the zone of Pellucida is right on the secondary oocyte. It should be like this. Like that around it, where there's not really any space between it. <clears throat> there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, that's a nucleus of the uh, secondary oocyte. So this is a secondary oocyte. Have everything labeled. Uh, zona radiata, pellucida. Oh, these. This is the granulosa cells or follicular epithelium. And I would strongly encourage you to. Uh, you know, maybe draw this yourself also, especially if you're a little left brain, more left brain than maybe you are right, because drawing it out is going to really kind of help you visualize it in your mind later on whenever I, I have these things uh, labeled and I expect you to know what they are, or I don't have them labeled and I expect you to know what they are. Uh, so let's kind of scroll down here to a picture of this guy. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can really kind of see, but because um, this is kind of a bad quality picture, I just scanned this out of my anatomy book. This is the granulosal cells right here, or the follicular epithelium. Let me maybe bring that down a little bit. Um, this guy right here, inside here, is the secondary oocyte. That's what this is pointing to right here. That's the secondary oocyte. Uh, this guy right here is going to the zona pellucida and it's this white stuff in here right here uh, where that's in the and you can kind of see how these are like little dots almost kind of like the granulosa cells are um, right there that's the corona radiata so the difference between the zona pellucida and the, the corona radiatus are going to be uh, you know one looks solid like kind of like a ring like a wedding ring or something like that and the other has a bunch of little individual cells that form around it. <clears throat> and that's the, let me change color for it, radiata, right there. This is a corona radiata, right there like that. <clears throat> so those are those structures. You need to know this. I, oh, in the antrum. Let me make sure I don't leave that out in the antrum. You need to know these. I went ahead and made a video on this because this is kind of a little bit more complicated to kind of understand and hopefully with a little bit of the background of where it comes from you'll be able to visualize it but uh, I may show you the same exact picture it may be a different one but you need to be able to recognize that this whole shebang right here is a secondary uh, follicle that this inside here is a secondary oocyte uh, the ring outside the secondary oocyte is the zona pellucida uh, the ring outside of that is the corona radiata uh, pellucida comes before P comes before R uh, P for pellucida R for radiata maybe that'll help um, and this right here is the antrum uh, the giant kind of like jelly bean capsule you know half moon looking deal uh, and the cells around that are the epithelial or granulosa cells I'd accept either one of those as a as an answer epithelial follicular epithelial tissue um, or cells or granulosa cells either one will work uh, but you need to recognize what both of those look like uh, in addition to uh, the pictures on your lab book on page 202. All right, uh, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that helped.